Hi, everybody. Uh, we are about to start this seminar on <clears throat> wage speakers in uh, Barcelona. We are still admitting uh, a few people, but I think I will uh, start introducing the seminar. I'm Federico de Maria, and I am a professor of ecological economics at the University of uh, Barcelona. And today we are presenting the results of a research project that has been ongoing now for uh, almost three years, which is called Waste Cares. And in particular, it is uh, a project on waste pickers in Barcelona. <laughs> when people think of waste picking or informal recycling, they tend to think that it's a global south uh, phenomenon of people roaming around in the streets and collecting plastic or paper for then reselling it. What we will argue today in the seminar of today it is that waste picking is a phenomenon also in the global north. For instance, <clears throat> in South Korea, there are retired people that uh, uh, do not have enough for out of their retirements to cover in their basic needs and therefore dedicate themselves to waste picking. This, if anybody travels to Europe, will see that there are waste pickers also in Europe. In, in Barcelona in particular, as you can see from the pictures, waste pickers collect metals uh, and then separate them and then transport and sell them to make a living. They, always, they also collect reusable, reusable objects like books or clothes or uh, shoes. Uh, I tend to think in general that wherever inequality exists, there are waste pickers, because I think it is quite strong to think that there are people that are living out of the waste of somebody else. But it is a phenomenon that exists. It is important and we should understand it better. Uh, quite often in Europe, we are discussing about the circular economy, the fact that our economic system is very unsustainable and we should be recycling more, but we never discuss about the political dimension of the circular economy. For instance, are we ready to accept slaves to improve the recycling uh, rates? The seminar of today will be divided, so to say, into two parts. The first part will present the results uh, of 100 interviews that we did with waste speakers in the streets of uh, Barcelona. What we will show is that they are very important for the sustainability of the city. We claim that they collect about 100,000 tons per year, which, as you can imagine, is a lot of materials. Yet they earn very little, about 20 euro per day, which means per month less than half of the minimum salary. And this means that they cannot cover their needs. For instance, half of them are homeless. And then we will go into the details of their relationship with the households, because despite the fact that authorities tend to uh, ignore waste pickers, households do interact with them. And the interesting fact is that houses in Barcelona, 70% of them, as we will explain, recycle paper, plastic, paper, and organic material, but they have problem dealing with the other type of waste, such as electronics or furniture or oil. And here is where the waste pickers come into the picture. And what we will show is that there are direct interaction between households and uh, waste pickers, and that households in Barcelona, generally speaking, have a very positive perception of the work that the waste pickers are doing. They understand it is a very hard work, but that it is a very important one for the city. Uh, for the time being, I'll ask you to mute your microphone. If you have any question or comment, you are welcome to share them in a the chat at any point. <clears throat> we will sort, uh, start with the presentation of the results, but before that, we're going to uh, give sort of international flavor to the <laughs> seminar. So we have here in the room Samuel Lecoeur. Samuel is the founder and director of Amelior, which is a French association of way speakers and street talkers based in Paris and Marseille. They are a union of about a thousand workers. And interestingly, Samuel Lecoeur is also a member of the executive committee of the International Alliance of Waste Pickers, which is a union uh, of about half a million waste pickers around the world in more than 40 countries. So Samuel, please, thank you for being with us. And uh, you have the word. OK, hello to all. Are you listening to me uh, all right? Yes, very well, Samuel. Okay. Thank you. So hello to those I don't know. Congratulations to be part of the knowledge about uh, West Pickers uh, life. Hello, Julia, Alessandro, our colleague from uh, Italy. And there is maybe also Lara from Turkey. We are part of the European continent represented inside the International Alliance of West Pickers. Uh, the International Alliance of West Pickers just began his uh, own uh, democratic process of uh, representation. We come back from uh, Buenos Aires a few weeks 
uh, ago, and we have now a president, vice president, treasurer, and a member of committee integrity, and also uh, more than uh, 81 uh, organizations from 31 countries. Maybe uh, I make some mistake. So we try to represent the 23 millions or more of voice speakers who take part in the the channel of uh, material um, and who provide 60% of the material who are recycling by industry in the world. So if we if we want to reduce our waste and uh, make more recycling and reuse, of course, we must we must consider us as uh, essential workers. So our story is a very old story. You know, uh, it's more older than a political party and uh, from the from uh, then that the police. It means that waste pickers in France are recognized since eighth century. There is no industry revolution without our um, participation and uh, nowadays we are in possibility of disappearition uh, maybe we disappear if we do not have access to flea market to sell what we can uh, take from the street so in Italy there is a, most, a few thousand of West speakers like in France maybe 10,000 or 15,000 in all big city where there is waste where there is inequalities and why there is no right for this uh, category of workers. So first, we consider as workers. Uh, and of course, we consider as workers, we must be protected uh, as a human being and a human dignity. So that's the first goal, to be considered, to be paid for our uh, jobs. Um, in France, we organized waste speakers street selling market, and we organized also uh, as a structure, a central structure, um, the collection and the recycling of, of maybe uh, 150 tons a month, um, textile, etc. So uh, the fact is that if there is no right to work, there is no possibility uh, for our society to to engage a real uh, process of uh, recycling. So that's why we are all together. Uh, to defend our rights as workers. So uh, we are very interesting uh, to know other organization of voice speakers in Europe, uh, Julia, Alessandro, Pietro, and other from Europe. Um, we must find new organizations. So if you have any uh, knowledge about organization in Spain, we will be very happy to meet them and to exchange about our common goals. Um, if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate. Um, I don't know what to tell you more than uh, you can trust West speakers to provide a good public service to the city and to the citizen also. We defend popular economy. We consider that anyone in our ground must have access to decent work and uh, to transit, to make a transition. Uh, from informal economy. Informal is not a real good name for, for me, for us, because with working, we we respond, we give an answer to our uh, normal uh, way of life in Earth. This means to have, uh, to have money to pay the rent and to have money to eat. So if we cannot eat, we cannot sleep. We are not, uh, we are not human uh, being, you know? So, we we need to find cities and uh, public uh, policies who accept our role and to give us a fair price for our participation we are do we are not we for us we are not slaves we are workers who are not recognized and it's a very old story uh, about uh, workers who need to have access to their rights uh, we have a lot of uh, revolution, we have a, a lot of progress uh, since a uh, century uh, that people can have access to rights, to the rights of working and right of um, uh, human beings. So we are not slaves, but we are com confined, we are uh, under pressure to not be included. We are already included, naturally, because we work. 
And we know people who give us things and we know people who buy us things. We know also that, for, for example, in our region, 50% uh, of the tonnage of uh, metal uh, is from the ends of the West Pickers. So we are considered as dissimulated worker of the public waste management uh, and private uh, sector who, who sometimes uh, benefits of the public service delegation uh, buy us material as private sector also. So there is this very unfair situation. We must stop to begin to have rights for waste pickers. So I hope in Barcelona, in Spain, uh, and in the future in all Europe, we can have access to to public policies. We can be inside the strategy of a roadmap to reduce the waste. Uh, like this, we can be part of the society. We are already included, but officially we are excluded workers. We are excluded by the police who come from the politics and uh, we need to find place to work uh, as any enterprise, uh, a collective enterprise. If you have any question, um, we'll be happy to try to answer. Thank you, Samuel. I think that intervention was very important. We we share the same spirit of this call for, for recognition and for the rights of way speakers. This is, it was the motivation at the core of the study that we started uh, three years ago. So I think sharing your experience was very important. And of course, we will be in touch because the fight is long and it is nice uh, being together. So thanks a lot, uh, Samuel, for being here with us. And uh, now I want to give, so next I'll, there will be the intervention of Daniel Wico on the recyclers, then next Julian uh, Porras on households. Ciao, Samuel. And Ciao. then uh, last, Susanna Narosky, who is a professor of anthropology in our university, who will act as a discussant. Daniel Wico is, um, has been trained in development studies and he was a former project manager at the International Labour Organization. And right now he's doing his PhD on waste pickers in Barcelona. So please tell us about who the waste pickers are and how they do their work in Barcelona. Thank you. Thank you, Federico, for the introduction and uh, for giving me the floor. And thank you, Samuel, for uh, your, your introduction. Um, so my brief presentation today will uh, focus uh, mainly on uh, uh, describing uh, uh, or providing some data on uh, informal recyclers or wave pickers in the city of Barcelona, according to the data that we uh, collected in our project. First of all, allow me to introduce, um, let's say, the main actor of, uh, or one of the main actors of, uh, of our research, which is, in fact, informal recyclers. In, uh, in Barcelona, uh, informal recyclers are uh, uh, commonly called the chatarreros, which comes from the Spanish word uh, chatarra, which means scrap metal. Uh, and uh, nowadays, uh, informal recyclers in Barcelona are workers who operate in the informal economy. And I apologize to Samuel for using this term that in our case uh, means mainly workers who are not recognized by the formal economy. Uh, and uh, uh, mainly they collect, transport, sort, and sell scrap metal uh, in the city. Um, in our research, uh, we argue that uh, informal recyclers substantially contribute to the recycling of metals uh, in Barcelona. Uh, however, um, we have observed that they uh, face a situation of heavy marginalization, which uh, unfolds along three axes. Uh, legal marginalization, economic marginalization, and labor market marginalization. The un uh, interplay of these three axes creates uh, uh, a situation that we call of structural informality in which uh, informal recyclers in the city are trapped. And in the next slide, uh, I will uh, present some more detailed uh, data uh, to show why we are making this claim, we are making this case. Uh, our findings, uh, just as an introduction, are based on a survey uh, that we collected uh, on a sample of around 100 informal recyclers, uh, a survey that then we complemented uh, with data from uh, observations and uh, uh, from interviews. What you're seeing here is the profile of uh, Barcelona's informal recyclers according to our data. We observed that uh, they are mainly 
um, mostly men uh, who are young, in fact, 63% of them is below 40 years of age, uh, they have a migrant background. In particular, 75% uh, is from Africa, mainly from Senegal, but there is also uh, a, a noticeable share of people uh, coming from Romania and belonging to the Roma community. They are of recent migration in Spain. Uh, almost 60% of them uh, arrived in Spain uh, two years ago or less. Um, and uh, a great majority of them, almost 80% of them, is undocumented. They do not have uh, the NIE, which is the document that foreigners need uh, to, to be in Spain, uh, let's say as regular migrants. What you, you can see in this slide is a simplified uh, explanation of the work of informal recyclers in the city. Um, as you can see, uh, they collect uh, scrap metal mainly from waste containers. Uh, and among them, uh, in a big majority of the cases, from the gray containers, which are the containers of unsorted waste. But they also collect it from uh, uh, the streets, more generally, and from construction sites. And uh, after that, they sell uh, the metal to brokers, uh, which uh, in Barcelona and Catalonia are called chatarerias, uh, which are uh, somehow the node between the informal economy and the formal economy, between the recyclers and the recycling industry. And the brokers in turn sell the materials to the recycling industry. And our estimate in this study is that there are more than 3,000 recyclers in Barcelona. Uh, what you can see here in this graph, uh, this graph shows uh, the main types of materials that they collect. Uh, we are talking about iron, uh, aluminum uh, cables that they collect for the copper that is inside. Uh, then there is a category called chatara or metal mix, and then uh, other types. Uh, the prices of uh, the materials, uh, the metallic materials are quite low. Uh, they range from uh, 0 0.19 euros per kilo in the case of iron to uh, 5.6 euros per kilo uh, in the case of clean copper, which is quite rare to find actually. One thing, uh, one of the most important thing that we ask to informal recyclers uh, is uh, how much they work per day and what is their average income. Uh, what you can see here is that uh, they, we found out that on average, they work around 10 hours a day and almost six days per week, which results, results in uh, uh, a working week of 60 hours, which is uh, much more than the, um, uh, 40 hours working week, which is the full full time uh, employment according to Spanish labor legislation. Um, in terms of income, uh, we have uh, found out that on average uh, they earn uh, around 20 euros per day, as Federico was saying, uh, which uh, effectively means uh, around two euros per hour, which uh, yeah, per month means uh, less than 500. Uh, euros, which is less than half than the minimum wage in Spain. So this very uh, low wage and high um, and uh, long working time results in situation of uh, struggle and precarity. And uh, therefore, we observed survival strategies uh, such as that of homelessness. Almost half of our sample is homeless uh, or in the case of squatting. Uh, in the 60, in six percent of the cases, the reminder lives in uh, uh, flats that are rented out sometimes collectively. Another important information that we asked in former recyclers uh, is that of the quantities. Uh, we basically asked them to try to estimate how much waste they collect every day. Uh, and we found out that on average, uh, one uh, informal recycler in Barcelona collects, around 120 kilograms of scrap metal per day. Um, so if we assume that they are working around five or six days per week throughout the years, uh, throughout the year, this means that one individual collector uh, collects uh, around 36 tons of waste in a year. Then if we multiply this data for the estimated number of 3,200 uh, workers that we try to estimate, uh, we are talking about around 115,000 tons of metals handled every year 
by informal recyclers alone uh, in the city of Barcelona, which is a quite staggering number. In terms of working conditions, uh, what we observe is that, first of all, uh, quite obviously, uh, operating informally uh, and uh, being undocumented, uh, they uh, do not have a contract. Uh, this uh, practically means that they lack any, any kind of uh, basic social protection and uh, uh, labor rights. Um, we also uh, didn't manage to detect any uh, any visible trace of collective organizing. Uh, so these workers uh, usually work alone, uh, and uh, this means that they have very low or no bargaining power uh, over the price prices of the waste that they sell in the waste value chain. Uh, we also observe that they usually uh, work without safety gear or with very poor safety gear, so they face health and safety risk on the job. And when we ask them uh, whether they uh, uh, could rely on other jobs, 84% uh, of them told us that they uh, could not. And when we asked them why, uh, most of them told us that basically being undocumented prevents them from being able to join uh, the formal labor market. Finally, uh, another thing that we asked uh, was um, to tell us about interactions that they have with uh, the urban environment and with some key stakeholder in the urban environment of the city. And uh, what we found out uh, we, we found out is actually that uh, they have quite some connections and interactions with uh, different uh, actors. First of all, households. We have noticed that almost 60% of them told us that uh, they have interaction with households, with Barcelona citizens. Um, and almost 50% of uh, them told us that they have uh, interaction with workers from construction sites. Uh, most of uh, these interactions are non-conflictive. In fact, they are quite cooperative and they revolve around uh, the retrieval of metals for sale. Um, we even know uh, some recyclers told us that they have a direct contact, uh, a mobile uh, contact with the uh, households or with construction workers that call them when they have to get rid of some materials. Um, the, the interactions with waste management workers uh, and with law enforcement, on the other hand, uh, are not so frequent. 27% in, in the case of waste management workers and 25% in the case of police. In these cases as well, we try to investigate the quality of the interaction and most of them told us that uh, these interactions were not conflictive. Um, and uh, especially in the case of police, almost no, no recycler in our sample told us that they were stopped because of the activity they, that they were doing. So for some reason, the 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 picture that we, we that we can draw is that draw is that uh, informal recycling seem to be tolerate, tolerated by the authorities. So, in conclusion, uh, to close my presentation, uh, I want to go back to our claim. Um, we we argue that informal recyclers, in fact, provide a material contribution to the recycling of metals of the city. Uh, yet, they are trapped in a condition of uh, structural informality. Uh, that, it, that it's characterized by uh, difficulty to regularize their migration status, uh, by the difficulty to find other jobs, uh, by basically an inexistent labor protection, and by very low and also fluctuating income. This means that they are uh, heavily socioeconomically marginalized despite uh, the contribution that they provide. However, they are not so invisible as perhaps some of the uh, mainstream narratives uh, tell. Uh, on the contrary, in fact, they have uh, quite interesting cooperative relations with uh, some stakeholders of the city, in particular with households and with other workers. And with this, I, um, I can uh, finish my presentation and uh, I leave the floor to uh, Julian for the second part of this seminar. Thank you very much.
Thanks a lot, uh, Daniela. That was a great short summary of our results on the way speakers in Barcelona. We hope it brings some light uh, on the phenomenon. And now we have uh, Julian Porras, who is a sociologist with a PhD from this uh, university, who has specialized in informal workers in Barcelona and has done research on this topic for, for some years now. And he will be discussing how the way speakers relate uh, to households in Barcelona. Julian, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Federico, and thank you, Daniele. Well, we have seen that uh, informal recyclers are embedded in a huge network of actors. And we were very interested in, in, the, in an specific relationship with the households, because we thought that <clears throat> were one of the most important actors. And this is why one of our goals was exploring this uh, uh, relationship. And uh, and to do that, we will we will we we, we conduct uh, different uh, methods, no, inner observations like a kind of you know urban ethnography in different neighborhoods, uh, interviews, deep interviews in a kind of home visit tours. We apply also a uh, one hundred uh, uh, surveys in different neighborhoods, upper class, middle class, lower class, uh, in a in a kind of with open questions, you know, in a kind of survey, a pilot survey, that allow us to build a solid survey that we apply to 300 uh, to online uh, surveys to inhabitants of Barcelona from 80 to 75 years old. That, we, we, that will uh, be representative by gender and groups of age. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I don't know what happened. Here is it. Okay, um, one of the first questions was who manages waste? Because we were uh, concerned about the idea of uh, who do that, no? and who maybe can connect with them. And uh, as we can see, uh, managing waste at, at home is a, is a chair activity. Maybe it's, 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 it's do it by, by grounds, no? the, maybe parents, the couple, also uh, all the family when, when the children grow up. No? But when it was in charge in a, uh, uh, for someone in a specific, it, it is consistent with the results that we can see in, in literature or in uh, other statistics about uh, reproductive labor. No? Here in this case, women uh, are in charge 33% in front of 27% of men. <clears throat> When we ask about what the households do, no, and the majority of them, they recycle. 70% always, 27% occasionally, 4%, uh, a, a very little, little group of uh, population, they don't recycle. And seems that they don't have so much problem with this five portion that we have in waste management system in Barcelona, no? a packaging, glass, paper, um, or uh, organic or, or, or rest, no? But one of the interesting results is this, only nine, or only percent of the households separate other materials. Since that we don't have problems with these five uh, containers or, or, the, or the materials with, of these five containers, uh, but we have problems with all of uh, these other ones, no? like uh, oil, batteries, uh, electronic devices, maybe bulky waste, uh, bulky waste. And it is consistent with the other uh, uh, question, no? Uh, when we ask about the effort, uh, the majority of the of the households says that uh, uh, for uh, to ordinary ways they don't have uh, they have little or not uh, or not effort. But on the other hand, when we ask about other ways, no, like like what, what I was explaining, no, oil, batteries, electronic devices, they 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 consider that uh, it was a considerable effort, sixty three percent of the households. And sorry. And when we try to connect this with challenges, no, what are the biggest challenge in waste management at home? We have like a two um, main, uh, 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 two different types of, of challenge. One related with the storage space, another related with weight or distance. When it is uh, clear when we when we try to understand that we live in very narrow, very, very small apartments. And also, we produce a lot of uh, waste. No, it, is, it seems that this not this not uh, uh, extrange. No, uh, other other percentage of population they have problems. No, twenty two percent with knowledge or understanding. Another one, uh, 40, 50 percent more or less family or behavioral problems. No, this typical discussion where we put the pets poop. No, or maybe the diapers. No. 
And <clears throat> we can recognize that we have a lot of problems with waste. No, it's a, it's a, one of the one of the one of the problems, and mainly connected, as we say, no, with the space, with uh, weight, with uh, the distance. And then we have problems to digest our our, our waste. And and uh, when I visit uh, homes, uh, I this is a, a picture uh, from uh, uh, one of the homes. Uh, 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 the, uh, the one of the 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 the, 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 interviewer, the interviewers she told me look this is the panic room well i saw a lot of panic rooms or maybe no rooms but corners <clears throat> a lot of panic corners in in barcelona and when we saw this or when we see these kind of uh, pictures we can realize that maybe we are not we we we, we cannot uh, 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 face uh, uh, the, the management of this kind of uh, uh, materials in the for in the, in the uh, in an individual manner, no. Uh, maybe we 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 recognize that we need help, no. Mainly from other members from the family, but also from outside. Look this that data. Fifty nine percent of the households have got help from neighbors, relatives, or friends, and of course we will see that other actors too. Seems that manage uh, waste management is not an individual or autonomous or an independent activity as we used to think. Look this other picture. This is a typical narrow stairs in Barcelona in our in our buildings. Maybe it is it, it, it is also connected with with uh, our main challenges. No, weight, uh, space, uh, distance, and of course infra infrastructure. And <clears throat> when we try to think in a in a no in a in a comprehensive way. way uh, we can connect with this uh, uh, with this quote. Uh, it was a female <clears throat> uh, interviewee, and she was a domestic worker, around forty years old. And she told me, "My boss, a young businessman, she described it like this, uh, and I can I and I cannot take uh, uh, cannot take sorry, but I can see properly. And I cannot take a piece of furniture." Uh, out onto the street. He lives on the fifth floor and he asked me if I knew anyone who could help us. It's interesting that uh, someone young uh, with resources to 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 not to 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 pay someone to deal with with her waste with his waste uh, uh, cannot be uh, totally autonomous, no? Cannot be totally uh, 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 independent in, in terms of dealing with his waste. <clears throat> when we ask about the, the relationships, uh, we found uh, one of the most important uh, results that we have. It's not uh, uh, when we ask, have you seen recyclers in your neighborhood? 83% of the population uh, of the households say yes, plus 5% that they say that they were not sure. It, it let us think this idea of invisibility. Sometimes we used to think, or media or government used to think these kind of workers as a as a marginalized or excluded groups, but no, it seems that they are quite visible and they are part of this uh, this this uh, or at least the uh, all the households recognize them. Maybe what is invisible are the the social relation of this occupation no? or the social relation that we have around waste management or also the occupation that could be, uh, they are uh, not recognized no, by media or by government. It's, a, it's an issue that we have to, 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 to research more. Uh, when we ask the relation, 33% uh, have a direct interaction with, uh, with informal recyclers. Uh, give them objects, for example, or, and materials, or talk to them, or give them food, or have the phone number and call them uh, uh, asking a favor, no? Uh, but since that is not the only uh, interaction, look this data, 64% intentionally leave materials or objects next to or over the containers. And for them, 66% say that they are thinking mainly about recyclers, since that they uh, uh, establish another way of interaction. Uh, Susanna Narosky gives us a, a, a clue concept, no, a, a, a key concept. She 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 call it, uh, I guess, invisible, uh, no interaction. Well, she will yeah, tell us a bit more later. Uh, we 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 call it invisible interactions, no. Um, 
I, I remember uh, I, when I interviewed some of the in, in, in the street in Barcelona, uh, some of them they say, well, I left the toaster on the street and then I walk around five minutes and come back, no, and I I, I check it. Well, they leave materials, but they also they are sending messages in somehow, no, material messages. We can say that they establish different types of interaction. Um, What the households leave, well, clothes, furniture, or balcony items, shoes, metal kitchen items, electric or electronic objects, books, toys, well, mainly objects uh, than uh, uh, informal recyclers, uh, reintroduce or, uh, uh, or reuse. But also those objects are, are a source of, of, of materials that uh, informal recyclers, they sell. When we ask about reasons why, <clears throat> uh, there are more or less three big reasons. One more connected with green or ecological conscious or something like that, and uh, are connected with more with avoid ways and allow someone uh, to benefit from the objects that they left or because can be reused. I remember a couple that I, inter uh, that I interviewed and uh, they told me, uh, our son bought us a huge TV. Uh, flat TV, and we didn't know what to do with the old one, and and uh, uh, they they face with this problem. No, they know that they have a, an object with value, with, with use value, and they can uh, deal in a in a waste management system of Barcelona. They tie the hire, they attach the remote control, and they put a label. It works, and put it next to the container. And somehow uh, they they ask for a new or a different manner to, to deal with these kind of objects with use value. Other reason is uh, help the, 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 the informal recyclers, no, is make recyclers work easier. Almost 40% of the population says why they leave their objects next to next to the containers or over. And it, it shows that the, this interaction is not only in one direction, it's not only households asking uh, that someone take their, their objects. Also, the, house, the, the households, uh, uh, they expand the care of the help outside her, their homes. No, For example, look this this quote, I leave it in a bag, and, and, and they mentioned about, and they, they were talking about clothes, wash it and iron. See that we don't we don't uh, treat our waste in that manner. It's a <clears throat> particular uh, uh, waste, no? It's a it's a also it's a way of of of, of, of treat other ones, no? The other uh, reason why is is a more individualistic one. We can we can say is because it's easier for them, no? Twenty eight percent. Um. Uh, we can say that the uh, households they have a positive perception uh, for the worst, uh, for the informal recyclers. They don't have alternative. They think it's a hard work. Uh, they don't earn enough uh, uh, for a decent living. They contribute to sustainability. They help significantly in recycling. And when we think how could the relationship between recyclers and households be strengthened? Uh, we ask them, no, we 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 ask them the different possibilities, and we ask if they will be ready to collaborate. For example, calling a cooperative for recyclers, and 50, 76 percent they, they 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 agree, and uh, a little bit a little less uh, about the idea of downloading an app, no, to keep in touch. Fifty four percent. And uh, we ask about other uh, possible uh, intervention or or policies. Uh, the idea of new uh, new container for metals, seventy one percent they agree. Uh, uniforms or protective uh, 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 materials as gloves uh, or glasses or uh, for recyclers they say seventy percent uh, they they were agree as well that the informal recyclers were hired by city council sixty percent or symbolic recognition or regularizing their in migration in migration status. Uh, we can conclude that uh, we have to rethink the values that uh, are on the foundation of waste management system. The values of capacity, autonomy, independence or dependence, how, depending on who we uh, interpret. Uh, we claim for, 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 for focus on the idea of inter interdependence. No, we are in the, in, in, inter interdependent. We recognize years ago, uh, 
or we have been recognizing that interdependence inside home is 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 is, 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 is uh, part of our lives. Maybe we are also interdependent in our waste management, no? In terms of space, weight, and management of objects with use of value and also materials. This is why we why we claim no for this waste care perspective that give us no a clues uh, or lens that uh, put it uh, uh, to, to highlight no these these strange relations that we have uh, with uh, waste and help us no to face this. Mm -hmm increasingly unequal capitalism that increasingly mix materials and devaluate objects so fast. Excellent. Thank you for your uh, attention. Please, please go okay. ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to cut you, Julian. Thanks, uh, Julian, um, for sharing with us the results on the households. Of course, I wanted to say that uh, it is not the only the three of us, who did this project. There were many collaborators. You see them uh, listed here. Maybe there are too many for me to read them uh, out, but, but you can have a look. We got funding for this project, uh, which is called Waste Care from the City Council of Barcelona from a nice program they have on a funding project of uh, young uh, researchers applied to the needs of, of the city. Of course, we are very thankful to the interviewees and the service respondents, in particular way speakers, because we were bothering them when they were uh, working. It was not easy. Uh, we must say also talking to them because since they are in a situation of social vulnerability, they are often very much afraid of, of talking to other people. Uh, we will be continuing um, on this project with the, on this issue, researching on this issue with the new project, which is called Circular Grassroots Innovation for Sustainable and Inclusive Urban Transition, which is led by Maria Jose uh, Zapata at the University of uh, Gothenburg, which is a comparison of grassroots initiatives in the circular economy between Amsterdam, Gothenburg, Barcelona, and NAN. So if you are interested in this topic, do not hesitate to, to contact us. And now I would like to give the word to Susanna uh, Narosky. Uh, who will um, make a comment on our research. She was uh, our mentor for the project. We had the chance some weeks ago to share some preliminary results. She gave us comments which we thought were so relevant that were maybe worth sharing also with you. Susanna um, is a very prestigious scholar. She got into uh, 2020 the National Humanity Research Prize by the Ministry of Science and Innovation in Spain. And uh, some 10 years ago, she was the principal investigator of the project Grassroots Economics, meaning project and praxis in the pursuit of the livelihood, which aimed to study austerity policies among the working classes of Southern Europe. So her perspective is, uh, was very interesting for us, and I have no doubt you will find it interesting. Thank you, Fuzuzana, for taking the time uh, for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Federico. Thank you, Julian and Daniele, for having you know uh, really taken taken this this particular issue at heart and uh, having developed this uh, research for uh, during a few years. Um, I'm. I don't want to take much time because I I really think that what's import important is the. Um, you know the, the feedback from our uh, uh, other colleagues that are here um, uh, listening to the presentation. I I just I'm going to to um, say a few things, and uh, some of them um, come from um, uh, our comments that really are based on my own ethnographic and anthropological uh, kind of perspective on. Uh, on method, if you want, no, on, 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 but I think it they could be maybe helpful to go forward, maybe in this uh, project that you are now, um, this, this uh, international comparative uh, uh, project. So first of all, I think that uh, what's really very interesting uh, in in your uh, project is this this um, issue of uh articulating the uh, way speaking uh work with households 
So, uh, and also, you know, this issue of care. Uh, I will come back to the care issue because I think, uh, um, I think it could be developed a little bit more. I mean, in, in subsequent uh, uh, works. Uh, and I also think uh, what's very, very important is something that uh, Federico uh, said uh, a while ago, which is this political dimension of uh, the circular economy. So everybody's speaking about this circularity and circular economies and so on and so forth. But then uh, there is not so much work on how these really in on the ground works. Um, and uh, I, I find that this, this aspect of looking at these uh, informal, so to speak, recyclers uh, is very important. Some, I mean, I, I know that uh, there has been um, quite a lot of research done on informal recycling uh, in Latin America and in other you know, places like India and uh, uh, Southeast Asia, et cetera. But it's true, I think, that in Europe uh, and probably uh, North America, there aren't so many uh, works um, looking at this. So um, I think that your research uh, shows basically three important issues. First, that these recyclers, these informal recyclers, uh, are doing an essential work uh, for society, for this circular economy uh, objective. Uh, and so uh, they are uh, really very important for this, uh, um, let's say, objective of sustainability. Um, and also, uh, and here I, I, I think that you could expand uh, more, uh, probably, because this is related to the care aspect. Um, I think that these, these, um, the work they do uh, is also has to be understood as a, as a, um, as a way uh, that these recyclers have to survive to find, to access resources that make their lives possible in uh, in this kind of migration diaspora where they are, um, you know, living. Uh, so um, I think that this, in, in this sense, it would be interesting to know more about um, how they redistribute these resources that they access you know the, the the money so to speak the income that they get that they uh, get through these recycling jobs um how do they distribute this income do they use it all uh, for their own survival do they uh, send remittances of some kind do they you know uh, uh, help other uh, migrants uh, in uh, barcelona or elsewhere in Europe, et cetera. So this caring aspect of the uh, recyclers themselves. No? Um, the second issue, which I think is, is very important, uh, and you know we knew about it, but you really present some data, uh, is that this is a, a, a very uh, a hyper ex exploitative uh, work that they do. Uh, it's not regulated and it's in a gray zone of recognition because I think that uh, Samuel uh, said something which is very important, which is these, these paradox where they are simultaneous, simultaneously included and excluded. So the, their work is obviously visible, it's tolerated by the uh, municipality, by the police, uh, et cetera, by the neighbors uh, and the citizens, but at the same time, it's unrecognized, uh, it's unprotected, and uh, it's, you know, subject to uh, all sorts of uh, arbitrariness uh, in the way that, um, you know, the, the uh, policymakers deal with uh, these workers. 
Uh, so I think that that's a very, very important uh, point. And, um, and finally, uh, what I think is very interesting, but I, I would like more information about, uh, is this interaction with households. Uh, I kind of feel that, you know, it needs more qualitative, if I might say so, um, research here. Uh, anyway, I, I will I will go more into it uh, right now. Um, something which I think this work does, uh, and I, I think this is one of its main um, assets, and I also think this was probably the main objective when you, you know, you, you proposed this uh, research was the um, aim uh, to uh, both um, uh, get some recognition for this work, so public recognition. So just saying, well, there is all this amount of recycling that is being done by these people who are there and we all know they are there, but you don't really recognize them uh, uh, formally, no? Uh, uh, but also uh, the fact, which is also something that you kind of address, which is redistribution. Um, which relates to exploitation. So uh, they are doing all this uh, work and they don't get, uh, you know, uh, rewarded for it in the proper way that would be, you know, uh, um, less exploitive. Um, so in fact, you are dealing with redistribution and recognition, which are these two aspects that Nancy Fraser, for example, highlights in, in her work. And I think it's very clear um, here. So your objective, in a way, I think, is uh, to have policymakers uh, kind of uh, mm, uh, understand that they, they have to act uh, and act in a positive way for the recyclers, but uh, this would be also positive for society in a more, uh, you know, general general way. So, uh, you know, to summarize what I think, this is a very important uh, work, and uh, I think it, it underlines a, a reality that has to be taken into account and acted upon by, you know, the uh, uh, powers that be, you know, municipal or, uh, um, you know, regional or at the state level or, uh, or uh, you know, European uh, level or whatever. So um, here are some of the comments or questions that I have that um, these research doesn't seem to answer fully and i would you know i just i'm i'm wondering if you know more about it and i i also uh, think that this might be you know my own perspective this ethnographic kind of uh perspective um versus the survey kind of perspective no so first uh about the uh differences between the waste pickers. So you're speaking about the waste pickers in a very general way. So these there is the African waste pickers, the Roma waste pickers, and other uh, uh, nationalities, so to speak. Uh, but uh, to me, what I have been observing, and I've been observing the waste pickers for a long time without doing research, but just, you know, observing and photographing, um, the way that sub-Saharian uh, waste pickers uh, operate in the street uh, when they do their work is very different from the way the Roma waste pickers operate. So in what I've seen, and I might be wrong, but I think this requires more uh, research really, um, I think that whereas 
the uh, sub-Saharan way speakers are more uh, in the uh, work individually, and you you know they don't relate much to each other. They sometimes they speak with each other, but it's very rare. Uh, the Roma way speakers seem to operate in a kind of network of you know relations, um, and I think the I I think these differences are important because um, they probably are important in, in terms of redistribution, redistribution of uh, work and of income. So, you know, we, and, and so in fact of care. Uh, so we need to know this resource, which is uh, the informal work of waste speakers, which, in the end is a resource for them to you know find some um living livelihood um resources um you know they have access to it in different ways so uh, that's one thing the other thing uh is that i think you should um look more into the brokers so these these brokers are really uh, a very central part of these recycling informal recycling uh, uh, system, and and you show uh, you 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 know in your very one of your very first slides it's very clear the brokers are there, and I think uh, looking more into the brokers is important because um, it relates to price and to prices and to uh, uh, how um, how prices are um, are uh, arrived at, you know? So for example, if we have a very few number of brokers, we would have a monopsony, which would mean, or an oligopsony, which would mean that the people who are selling, the sellers, the waste pickers, do not have a lot of uh, you know room to go to the um, to the other uh, broker. Uh, if there are many brokers, there is more leeway, so you can um, haggle more with the prices. Uh, and I think that's important because price making it's not only about collective organiz organizing which is what you say they are not collectively organized so they cannot you know uh, uh pressure the brokers but it's also about the market the situation of the market and the situation of the market is not only about the prices of the metals you know and the you know whatever the market uh, uh of uh, uh futures or whatever but it's also about the com you know the the um, competition in the market you know how how much competition is there between buyers no so i think that's something you you really need to uh, look into because it relates to something that samuel also uh, said which is the free market are they really uh, operating in a free market or not? Or is it a monopoly or an oligo, uh, you know, a, a monop monopsony or an oligopsony? And I think that's important to, you know, get into, uh, into that. Uh, then the, uh, another thing is, um, relates to uh, these, um, you you kind of say in a few uh, in a few uh, places that um, they um, you know they cannot work they cannot find other jobs because they don't have the knee you know they are not regularized um, so I have two issues with that first one there is another kind of level of regularization for irregular migrants, which is the padron. They can be empadronados without being regularizados, no? without having the, the official NIE. Uh, and the padron gives them access to health, 
general health. So it, it's important to have the padron, even if you don't have the knee. Um, the other thing is about job, you, jobs. There is a lot of, you know, jobs for informal uh, migrants in agriculture, in, uh, you know, petty, petty selling, petty commerce, etc. So even if they are not regularized and they don't have, uh, you know, access to a formal official job, they could be hopping in between different kinds of informal jobs. So if they don't do it, we should try to understand why. Maybe because even if this is very badly paid, maybe it's a better option or not. Maybe, you know, uh, whatever. Or maybe they do hop from one uh, informal job to another. So that's something we need to, you know, kind of know because I think that all these um, non-regularized uh, uh jobs are kind of related to each other. We have a, a, an, an ecosystem of informality, which is very central to the way uh, actually present day capitalism works everywhere in, you know, uh, uh, in, uh, in the, um, in in the in the European uh, and uh, Western countries as as well as elsewhere. So anyway, that's uh, something else. And finally, uh, in relation to uh, the households, I have two two issues. The first uh, three maybe. The first one is, um, I would like to have a break uh, a break up uh, of neighborhoods because. I think different neighborhoods have different relations with the waste pickers. I think there is, uh, um, you know, the relationship with waste pickers has lots to do with class, for example, no? Working class neighborhoods versus, uh, you know, very bourgeois, whatever neighborhoods, and they they relate different. And, and we don't see that in your, um, you know, presentation, but maybe you, I mean, Julian said he had an idea uh, about these differences. The second thing is um, that uh, I think we need to uh, differentiate, and I, I don't know to what, you know, in what measure you can do that with the kind of uh, uh, the kind of evidence that you have, uh, the discourse of households and of people in households and the practices. So one thing is what people say they do, what they think. Uh, in a, a particular moment, you say the uh, um, people think something or other. You know, well, I I, I don't know. One, well, I mean, we all say things. And we do different things. So I think that's important to kind of uh, understand the difference and follow up with the practices, really. Uh, and finally, something that surprised me, uh, but you probably might have the, the uh, information, is that uh, you uh, you have a list of what people of what households live so what what they live in the containers or you know in the street whatever and the uh, uh primary things they live is clothes shoes furniture and then some you know kitchen wares and so on fine you know, I, I I think this is perfectly what the, the reality of it. But then your waste pickers are basically metal waste pickers. So there is something that doesn't, you know, connect. So, so when the households are saying, oh, yes, we think about the waste pickers and we leave the things here. Maybe they are thinking about other waste pickers, which are not the ones you have been looking at. 
So I think there you are, you have a, a, an issue that you need to kind of address. Um, and anyway, I, I think this is a great project, but I really think you need to, you know, uh, keep on going and looking at it, maybe from a more kind of ethnographic uh, perspective. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's fantastic, <clears throat> Susanna. That's why uh, we invite you. Uh, to discuss and challenge us. That's that's great, really. The good news is also that the, the project officially ends uh, in a month, but then we will continue three more years at least uh, researching on this. So there is time to uh, fill up the gaps. Um, we've been taking uh, notes of your questions, so we will address, I don't know if all of them, but some of this in turn. I will go first, then Daniele, and then uh, Julian. Uh, so first, I want so they're not in order the way in which I'm. Uh, we are addressing the questions, but uh, first is about the way speakers, and then we will do the households. So on the relation to the issue of how is the income from way speaking redistributed, it's a good question. What we wanted to do next is to interview way speakers on how they spend their money, but we know that on average they earn about five hundred euro per month and. As far as we understand now, there is no much money left for remittances because if they rent a room, this costs to them about 100 or 200 euro per month. And then you have food and then maybe you have a little bit of tobacco or marijuana or uh, alcohol and then some other expenses. So your money is basically gone. Uh, it's also true that you raised before uh, an issue which I think is important that there are we should differentiate among way speakers. No, not all way speakers are the same. We are talking here about averages for simplicity, but there are people that they have, for instance, more experience, or they are physically more able, or they have more contacts, or they spend more time on way speaking, and therefore they're able to make more money. So in this case, I think there are remittances indeed. Um, here, and I'm not surprised the questions come from you because you've been working on, on values regime, there is a, a question, and here I'm addressing the issue of brokers related to the value chain, no? In the sense that what we would need to do, but it's not so easy, is to get the prices of this material at different stages of the value chain. When the waste picker sells it, when, then the broker send it to more specialized brokers, because the one who buy from waste pickers buy all the metals. But then this broker sells to another more specialized brokers, which buys, for instance, only iron or only a certain type of metal. And then this sells it to the recycling industry. It would be great to have these prices to see what is the value chain and whether uh, waste pick to see or prove that waste pickers are actually exploited within this value chain. This data we have not been able to, to obtain yet, at least, uh, but of course it would be uh, quite relevant. Um, the issue of the brokers is, is, is quite interesting. In fact, uh, Julian has been demonstrating that there are uh, brokers or chatelerias all around Barcelona. They follow, when you look at the map of Barcelona, sort of horizontal line. And this is because of an issue that Claudio Catania was raising in the chat, which is the fact that we speakers with a cart full of 100 kilos of metals, they cannot travel very far. So they need to find a broker which is rather close. And this, of course, influences price determination. There are other determinants of the prices. And one is, for instance, whether you have papers or not, whether you have an identification number or not, the NIE. And this is because uh, officially for selling the materials, you should be able to identify yourself to prove that this material has not been stolen. So if you are an undocumented uh, migrant, then you don't have this paper. So you have to sell to another intermediary, another broker, which will pay you less because you don't have the documents. Uh, so this issue of the value chain and the, how prices are determined in this market, it's, it's a very relevant one and the one in which we still need to, to work more on. Of course, there are also the international fluctuation on prices and what happens in the international market does affect what happens uh, in uh, Barcelona. And last, before giving the word on Daniele for the issue of uh, exclusion or inclusion, I wanted to comment on this idea you had that why don't, why don't they jump from one informal work to the other? Well, we don't know exactly. Uh, we said that for 84% of them, way speaking is the main occupation. 
And then the other jobs that they mentioned are the one that you mentioned, working in the informal sector, but in construction, in agriculture, cleaning, uh, painting, uh, moving materials or stuff like that. My guess would be something that you raised already that they, they make less money in that sector than in this one. There is also an issue, I think, which is related to networks and the fact that those who are in waste pickers are recent migrants. So they've been in Barcelona for two years or less. And according to what they were telling us, it takes about a week to train yourself into waste picking. And you have no investment to make. You can start straight away. So probably my guess would be that the barrier for entering into waste picking is not too high. So what, this is why they end up there. And still what they make compared to other informal works uh, is not too bad. Of course, we could say much more on this, but I want to leave the uh, give the word to uh, Daniele to address the issue of inclusion and exclusion, and maybe if you want also the issue of the differentiation of waste pickers, for instance, the differences between sub-Saharan and Roma, and and then maybe Julian after can address a little bit more the questions on households. Daniele. Uh, thank you, Federico, for the floor, and thank you, Susanna, for the uh, very uh, sharp observations and questions. Um, I I think they were all very interesting. Um, I would like to, to react in particular to uh, your reflection on uh, um, this uh, gray zone of uh, rec between recognition and not recognition and exploitation. Uh, also maybe um, bidding on Fraser that you mentioned. Um, the picture that you are uh, uh, that you are suggesting is uh, is quite fitting. In fact, uh, uh, what we what we realize in our uh, in our observation is that um, they are not so invisible as they appear. No, uh, they have relations with uh, with other actors in the city, uh, which are either of cooperation or uh, or or of acceptance. Because even in the cases of police, we we really initially we really wanted to uh, observe whether there were conflicts with the law enforcement. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, we noticed that in most cases, if there is uh, any interaction, this is not uh, uh, very conflicted. There is, in fact, some uh, uh, tolerance for what they are doing. Um, Nancy Fraser, uh, when she describes capitalist economy today, uh, explains how um, basically entire groups of workers or entire uh, jobs are moved in between the formal capitalist economy and the informal economy according to what is more profitable no um for for the so-called capital accumulation um and i think what we are observing here in the case of waste picking can be framed in this term uh in these terms uh, because on one hand, uh, the fact that they are tolerated shows that uh, uh, this is uh, um, a service that is required by the economy because uh, these uh, the materials that they collect are necessary for the economy to, to function. But at the same time, what it seems from the low prices uh, in the value chain is that uh, this, um, uh, this service is would not be profitable enough to be uh, to to create a uh, a job in the formal economy and so what we end up is a situation in which we have workers that are doing a useful service but that can be can do it only if somehow they are exploited um and nancy fraser also suggests how uh in in our uh, economies this happens through legal uh, um to legal frameworks to uh, legal and institutional framework. So this is also why we wanted to stress the fact that they are uh, legally marginalized uh, and uh, yeah, legally marginalized basically, because what we noticed is that there is this interaction between labor law uh, and uh, migration law that is what keeps them uh, from, prevents them from being uh, legal migrants, which might be uh, somehow functional uh, to, to profit profitability of this business. Um, and uh, then I also wanted to 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 address uh, your uh, your reflections on the differences between among way speakers. Um, I want to first of all start by saying that uh, when we observed our sample and we also observed where we collected the the surveys, 
uh, we have noticed that uh, we ended up uh, um, collecting them uh, very often close to the chatarerias, close to the brokers. Uh, this means that we have uh, uh, reflected on the possibility that we uh, underestimated the presence of uh, uh, way speakers belonging to the Roma community. Because, as you also suggested, they might not be um, operating close to the chatarerias, but in more uh, uh, structured uh, and more hidden uh, waste collection and separation uh, uh, contexts. At the same time, though, I would like to, to, to say very briefly that I'm not uh, completely sure that um, the work of uh, sub-Saharan uh, recyclers is uh, more individual uh, in the sense that probably on an aggregate level it is because uh, Roma recyclers are very, very well organized. But we started to notice that, especially among uh, uh, recyclers coming from Senegal, uh, there are some uh, some cooperative dynamics uh, based on uh, probably a national or ethnic belonging that uh, uh, are are interesting. There are a few chatarria or informal collection centers as the one that Federico suggested before, uh, which uh, are, uh, let's say, um, collect mainly uh, resources and work coming from, from Senegalese way speakers, which is also something that might be interesting in terms of remittances, which Federico suggested earlier, but it's something that we haven't investigated in uh, detail. And uh, very quickly, maybe Fede will also address the question on squatting um, that uh, was in the chat. Someone was asking the to draw the distinction between homelessness and squatting. This is an interesting question, and we don't have a very, very precise uh, answer in the sense that in Barcelona, there are uh, flats that are squatted. So there are, let's say, there are four walls and a roof that is being squatted illegally. So uh, this is what we counted as squatting. Uh, but then there are also uh, other uh, public spaces, uh, for example, gardens or uh, uh, spaces in which buildings uh, have been demolished, in which uh, people build some sort of shelters. We tend uh, we tended to address this or to call these homeless, uh, but of course it's it's a fine line, uh, and uh, we also relied a lot on what uh, they were telling us. So if they were telling us I'm sleeping in the street, we tend uh, tendentially, we mark them as homeless. Great. Thanks a lot, uh, Daniele. So more maybe related on the question of, of the households. We had a sort of internal separation of labor, as you can see. Uh, Julian, <laughs> maybe you want to address uh, the questions. And then soon we can uh, give the possibility also to people to switch on their microphone and, and make their comments and questions. Please, well, well, also we have a lot of questions on the on the on the chat. Well, yeah, <clears throat> uh, uh, Susanna, thank you, and you address a lot of a lot of good points, interesting points that we have. We, we we try to research, but we don't have the, enough time. Well, this is a a short uh, you know, uh, project, one night, one year and a half, and we conduct a lot of ethnographical field work no we we also also we train ourselves no to to our guests to detect the differences the different types of web speakers as you say there are a lot of different different types of web speakers but i don't i'm not quite sure that they are so specialized well they, they are specialized but not so much actually those who pick a, a scrum metal also pick objects we were quite surprised that, for example, they complete some of the earnings with, for example, picking shoes, on pa a pair of shoes, or, or maybe uh, some clothes or, or, or something like that. Uh, of course, there are some of them that they are very specialized in specific objects. No, they, they go like uh, with the small cars or the small uh, uh, shopping cars. No, and 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 they and they they are more specialized. And of course, also they 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 are uh, they have different uh, social organization in, in, between different groups. No, and uh, we have in a, in in this chapter. Uh, different experts of of this uh, of of these uh, collectives, no? Uh, Mauricio Chemas, I guess, is inside of the room. Uh, Michael Rendon, that they have, that they did, that they have did done their their uh, thesis, this PhD thesis uh, about these organizations. Also, Carlos de Clos, that is here, also have research about about this organization that they are very particular and, of course, they are uh, wider than than the uh, specific activity, no? The 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 the, the 
the recyclers' uh, uh, activity. But also in the case of of of, of uh, households, we need um, uh, well. <laughs> if, if the case of uh, uh, recyclers is, is difficult, the, the 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 way to catch the the households is 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 more. No, is 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 is, is even quite impossible to detect everything. And this is why we try to do it in this. Uh, this uh, both um, with this both approach, you know, like uh, 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 doing this. Uh, I, I didn't explain well, but we did uh, uh, deep, deep interviews in inside of homes, and we walk around the home, and we took page, pictures that were that were that I was uh, uh, showing. And yeah, but we need more. We we of course we 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 put attention on on the social class uh, aspect. And and uh, in make a, and and it let us uh, uh, recognize other actors, for example, the doorman, no, or the janitor, no. I don't know the the, the proper name in, in in English, and and in upper class uh, uh, neighborhoods, the janitor is a, is on, is another broker, no. They allow us enter to the building, for example, and they point it out uh, for the for the informal uh, for the recyclers. Look, take this or 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 please, or they have their phone numbers. But also the, the the domestic workers, the domestic workers seems that are the, the first uh, filter of this process of, of of dealing with waste, no. And of course, it, this is it is uh, highly related with with, with 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 social class, and and uh, other question and 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 well, and there are more more actors and are uh, and also. Uh, 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 the the idea of the boundaries, no. Who opened the door and until which door the the, the recyclers enter? Seems that this there is more fluid uh, relation that uh, that we used to think. No, we used to think that we are autonomous within the, our ways uh, in a, in an autonomous manner. But in some some households, they left they they allow the 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 the, the, reform, the recyclers enter and take out the the objects. Uh, of course, we we know that the, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the, P, the 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 household says one thing and they act in the other one. Actually, the the, the rates of 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 of, of recycling are like uh, less than forty percent, and seventy percent of the household they say that they separate like uh, quite well. No, uh, of course there is a distance between the practice and 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 the and the and what the and what the what the what the, are, are, what the household says, but what the, what is interesting is. Uh, uh, how we uh, uh, deal with this no this 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 uh, distinction between we do by ourselves or we care uh, or we uh, uh, care the our objects i guess that the the, the most important part are, are, are in, in that size and also when <clears throat> when would you say that um, uh, that seems that they are not the same it's not the same phenomenon and i want to 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 clarify well to 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 highlight that the what the was what the recyclers uh, does or the, the, what what they do the recyclers is not only pick no they they select no they have a, a, a knowledge to understand different materials and they pick they select but also they they transform in somehow it's like a they digest a lot of materials and uh, 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 and 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 in some moments households no like uh, they left objects but for uh, for 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 recyclers are materials no but this is why the the the, the discourse are, has a, a distance and yeah we have to 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 find a way to express in a better manner no to fit, to, to 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 think that is not that, that, that they are not different uh, uh, phenomena I was reading uh, some questions on the on the on the on the chat. One was about the estimation. We done the, the estimation trying to cut to to we, we we use different manners. No, one of them the, the easiest one was taking the list of the of the of the formal uh, I don't know what is the name of the formal shops where the inform where the recyclers sell materials, and then we walk through the city and and saw the informal ones. And then we uh, we we saw the informal settlements where also some uh, recyclers uh, save materials, no, or, or or sell materials, no. And we cut we estimate that more or less there are around thirty. And if in a conservative manner, uh, in a conservative estimation, if uh, we can say that more or less uh, uh, sell materials around uh, one hundred per per one of these uh, shops. 
well, different types of shops because there are different types of, 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 of brokers too. And, and also we we use the estimation that um, uh, Michael Rendon and Josep Splogas have done in, in Granogers. And with this estimation, we estimate also, we, we compare and, and also it helps us to, to give this, 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 this number. Federico and Daniele, you can also, if you have more questions. I, I read other ones, but please interrupt me whenever you want. I read oh, I think... uh, Michael Rendoz yeah, if I ask if uh, nowadays uh, we speak, uh, recyclers speak uh, cardboard. Uh, not in, in Barcelona or not at least what we have, uh, what, what we have seen. Uh, years ago, yeah, they, 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 they pick, but right now we haven't, we, we haven't seen uh, 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 recyclers that pick uh, cardboard. Uh, I guess that uh, Julian would ask if we know uh, how many electronic devices no the, the informal recyclers speak. Yeah, and can I um, can I precise a little bit the question because there might be you know, it was very interesting that you said like I guess um, seventy percent of something of households like were stressing that the use value they wanted to give it to recycling because of the use value, but then on the other hand it seems like chatareros are all like dismantling everything. So it's recycling is not exactly reusing. So I was wondering is, or even if there is some of some connections of recyclers to repair workshops, or is they even might send some mobile phones overseas? I don't know if have, if you have data on this kind of more like on devices that could be even like lucrative reselling them, not only dis dismantling of, of course, like a like a washing machine or something, uh, apart from being very toxic, uh, is more like lucrative dismantling than reselling. But device like mobile phones and um, and um, other like tablets and um, computers could be like um, um, shipped away or or or, repa or repaired. No, there is yeah. a a a a, 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 a training or or at least or a knowledge that the 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 the, the recycler has yes detecting what has value in itself yeah. for yeah. sure they don't they don't take a a phone and they broke it to try to 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 extract the materials because they don't have the 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 no the 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 way to do it but for example they 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 take for example copper from some uh, electric uh, uh, appliances no Mm. Or, or in some moments they they can separate uh, metallic parts, uh, uh, metal parts from uh, a lamp. No, this okay. is what they do. And in, the, in this digestion, this this uh, gaze or this train gaze allow us to to allow them to 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 pick, for example, uh, some uh, mobile phones and carry on next to these shops. And there are other communities that they buy, uh, for example, mobile phones or shoes or clothes. I mean, it's more a kind of um, uh, uh, ecosystem, no? And if you go through Raval, there are a lot of shops and you can see that uh, uh, some uh, recyclers stop inside in front of these uh, shops and they sell, for example, I don't know, maybe a laptop, an old laptop, yeah. and or maybe an... Uh, uh, but the problem is that it's, it's quite difficult to estimate the quantity of this diversity of materials because we are in with a, we're facing a other problem in in capitalism we mix materials a lot and we have an, a huge variety of uh, this is why uh, the waste management system they have five containers and they try to solve everything by five containers no it's, it's like a quite uh, but i'm sorry daniele federico no i think it it's uh, it, it was good um <clears throat> Now maybe we could uh, open the floor for for questions. I think just to touch on this point of recycling or reuse. No, I think me as most of us when we approached the issue, we were thinking that their activity was mainly or exclusively about recycling metals. And then we found out no, there is much more about reuse than what we actually thought. So what is new in the new research project in which we are involved? is exactly to look into this. And I think Samuel also uh, raised the issue at the beginning because he mentioned flea markets, flea in the sense of second-hand uh, markets. I lived in Paris 20 years ago, and I remember very well, already at the time, there were especially Chinese uh, people 
collecting, waste picking around, and then having these markets. And this exists also in Barcelona, in Raval, uh, in Glorias, and in many other places. Um, so, so this is something we should explore further. And in the room, I think there is also Blanca Cayenne, who has been working a lot about uh, repairing, for example, in, in Barcelona. So do waste pickers also repair? I don't know exactly. To tell you the truth, we don't know. So this is something we should explore next uh, because it's quite uh, interesting. I think there is, uh, if you can raise your uh, hand if you want to ask a question. I think there was Ilya Sadowski who yeah. wanted to raise a question. So, so you can go ahead, please. Hello, everybody. My, my name is uh, Ilya. I teach uh, circular economy at the University of Pompeu Fabra at the Master Courses of uh, Sustainability Management. Uh, I would, uh, Daniela introduced this, this topic as uh, wherever there's a quality, you will find uh, the, the pickers. I strictly disagree with that because it's not about the quality, it's about the, the economic market, point and simple. Uh, however, this was a very nice dis discussion on something that I don't know anything about. So the social aspects of, of uh, circular ex economy for me, it's a big unknown. I consider the, the waste pickers as uh, valuable mem members of the, of the society. And uh, I, I wonder, you many times actually you, you mentioned the, the waste management system. Uh, let's speak about first about the economic aspects of the waste management system. So generally speaking, what the, the, the waste pickers are, uh, are doing is actually taking the valuable stuff from the gray container and the bulk, uh, especially metals from the, from the, from the bulk uh, uh, waste and they are taking it to, to recycle. So I'm not saying that this is super nice, but uh, however, did you, balance that with the with the prices that that we are we are paying actually as a member as a citizens of barcelona let me give you some 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 numbers uh the the numbers of the waste management which actually uh ajutamiento is is uh is uh charging us every second month uh it increased from 47.10 euros per ton to 71.6 euros per ton for, for treatment of the waste. And as well, Terza is charging us 23.6 euros in 2022 and 35.8 euros per ton for incineration of the, of the waste, which actually ends up over there. So my question is concerning economics, if, if we are taking out the most valuable part, and uh, everything else is actually paid paid by the by, by the citizens. I'm not saying that we are not supposed to. I'm not saying that we are not supposed to support. But do you see kind of business model in here how we can include actually the waste pickers in the in the normal economy? Because instead of paying Tersa, we can actually try to legalize. I would say their business of picking. So that, that will be my question in terms of economics. So because the waste management system is being balanced in between value of the costs for treating of the waste and the valuables and the valuables are gone after the waste pickers. Here, I think that there is opportunity to, to I would say legalize the, their business. And second point is, have you ever tried actually to balance the education of the waste pickers because i was so sorry on my on my, my on my ex, uh, 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 on my expression but i was scared shitless to leave my my refrigerator when i bought a new one on the street on, on thursdays in costa franks actually the bulk waste goes on thursdays refrigerator has a compressor it has a lot of a lot of copper and i know that they will dismantle it it's not about a mess of waste. It's about actually the environmental impacts of the of the materials that they pick. So all the refrigerators which are inside the the, the fridge, they are causing a lot of of uh, they they are inside. They're having a lot of greenhouse gases, which are actually even if they recycle hundred kilos of copper. 
it's a balance in terms of, of environmental impacts. So what I see with, with the way speakers is actually uh, in between the households and the green dots. Let's not forget, it's not the five containers that, that we are having. We're having the, the, the Punt Verde in, in Barcelona. However, in between the households and the Punt, Punt Verde, there's no communication. And here I see a, some kind of a business model where the pickers can, can, actually, can actually do a very good and environmental service without them damaging the, the environment. Thanks. No, thank you, Ilya. I'm happy to take uh, these questions if uh, Julian and Daniel allow, and then I'll give a word to Samuel, which I think is with us and, and wants to intervene, which would be great. Um, so the, the, the reason why uh, the amount of money that every citizen pays goes up is mainly related to um, European legislation and to the directives. Uh, this is because the price the, is a sort of uh, price incentive. So the price of sending waste to the landfill or to the incinerator has been increasing because uh, they want to create sort of market incentives for the municipality to increase recycling rate. But here there is a problem, at least my opinion, structurally that the selective, the, the process of uh, collecting uh, waste in a selective manner uh, that is applied in Barcelona reaches a certain limit. If you want to increase the recycling rates, you need to go to the door-to-door -door, uh, system, which of course we know uh, has been tried in Barcelona and then, uh, well, I think it became a political issue and then it, it, it got stuck, so to say. Um, here there is the question that the waste pickers very clearly do not uh, disturb, so to say, the recycling systems, no? because they do not enter or they do not take anything basically from the containers of glass, organic material, uh, packaging, and paper. They focus on the gray container. The gray container in Barcelona, it goes to a plant or more than one plant where they do some sort of mechanical separation and then it goes to the incinerator. So in this mechanical process, some of the metals are removed, but- no, All uh, of the metals are being removed. First, it, it goes to, to, the, to the magnetic separator, then it goes to, to uh, separator for, for diamagnetics, aluminum. So that's valuable materials. That means that it will de no. decrease the price. Whatever. It's not what we are paying. It's actually what the city is paying, the companies which are treating the waste. And I here okay. I, I see the, actually the business model where they can be legalized. The, the 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 business, if I can say, of the of the waste pickers can be legalized. Instead of paying Tersa, we can actually pay them. Yeah, yeah, I I don't doubt that. That's that's a possibility. But of course, uh, Spain is one of the countries in the world where uh, waste management has been privatized the most. Um, so the different fractures are under control of different uh, corporation, which I can tell you are not so ready uh, to share their profits with waste pickers, no, because it's a, it's a power dynamics. So this already emerged more than 10 years ago, in which there were attempts by this corporation to actually remove the waste pickers from the scene exactly because of what you are saying. No? So, but anyway, this is a long debate, but but I agree with you, we, we could explore, and this was also one of the motivation of our uh, study, to explore option for to say for legalizing the business. Of course, out of the profits that they get right now, it is not possible to legalize because it's too expensive, because they get to euro per hour, to euro per hour, you can obviously don't pay a salary because uh, instead of earning 20 euro per day, you should earn about 20 euro per hour in order to get a minimum salary of about 1,200 euro, which is what is there right now in Spain. An option that we explored in the past uh, is that there is um, a company, a startup in the Netherlands, which developed an app for an application for the mobile, in which you, the house, at the household level, you could actually say what materials you have for recycling or for disposing, and then the app automatically creates a sort of a circuit for a waste pickers to come home and collect it at the time availability that you gave. So this is something that is in our radar. In the Netherlands, it's done, not at the waste pickers level, but it's a business actually of a company. And we have discussed uh, the option of sort of implementing a pilot project in Barcelona. But first, we needed to know a little bit more. 
that would be an opportunity. But as I argue, I, I brought a PhD thesis on way speakers in Barcelona, which I recently also published as a book. There, I argue that if we recognize that way speakers are giving an environmental service to society, then we should compensate them for that. We as a society, and therefore probably through public authorities. So if the municipality is paying these private companies who manage the other fractions of waste per ton, then I think we should pay waste pickers also per ton, at least the same amount that we are paying to private companies. That could potentially make the business a little bit more viable. Of course, we have to do a little bit more calculations and so on. In the past in Barcelona, sorry, I don't want to take too much time, but there was an experiment of a cooperative supported by the municipality, which, is, which was called Allen Cop, which lasted for uh, two or three years, promoted by the uh, Trias, when well, Xavier Trias was the alcalde of Barcelona, which didn't last too long. We could discuss why uh, there are documents online which you can find of why this project failed. But I think there are opportunities and possibility, uh, not essentially for regularizing these people. Some of the people of the way speakers actually enjoy the autonomy that they have, but to actually improve their working and living condition, which I think we would all uh, agree. I see uh, Samuel still with the is uh, end up, so I'm very much in favor of giving him the word because it was very interesting what you shared with us before. Samuel. Yeah, thanks uh, for your uh, for the opportunity uh, of uh, asking a question. Uh, first, uh, as you know, uh, uh, as a member of the international, we are very interested to all knowledge. Uh, all studies about Spanish uh, waste pickers' uh, work and uh, goal, and uh, also if you can share, we have also a lot from friends uh, can share to you. Uh, we are, uh, as, as you know, an association of waste pickers in France born 12 years ago, and we developed a lot of solutions who can 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 appear as the same or European country, or, or Barcelona, or Spanish West Lickers. I'd like to ask you if there are some West Lickers uh, from Barcelona from Barcelona who are here today, who can speak with their own voice, or if it's possible, and if it's possible, to meet one day in Barcelona or in France, our colleagues from Senegal, because we have a lot of Senegalese in our region, and a lot of Romania people, and we like to, to make some exchange, knowledge, experiments, and day-to-day -day life in Barcelona and France, and also, I think, Sally uh, and maybe Turkey, Turkey to, to entertain uh, our corporation, because uh, the voice of the way speakers uh, must be, be, must be there. And uh, so that's my question. Can you share study, and can we share in the future? Uh, time, Barcelona, in France, or in Italy, or you know, where we can meet uh, your, uh, your white speakers. Uh, that is, and of course, if there is people who, who know some organization of white speakers in Spain, in Barcelona, uh, association, collective, association, or cooperative, which is very useful, there is not to help create one. Because without an official um, official um, statue, the West speakers cannot be included. And they are excluded because they are not official association or representation. So I would like to know if, if you think that it's possible to organize a workers' meeting through uh, the, the study you make uh, uh, through the international alliance or through the European continent, uh, European Association, or to our association with friends. So uh, thanks for everything. It was very, uh, very useful to see that uh, the ideas and the reality are the same. It uh, became very urgent now. Politically, juridically, environmentally, economically, socially, uh, and professionally, to organize this uh, work in Europe uh, in consideration and expectation. Thanks. Thanks. 
Excellent. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Samuel. Thanks for being here uh, today. You shared earlier that uh, uh, you had a family member at the hospital. This is why you have been <laughs> driving around. But thanks anyway for making the effort to be here. They, Daniele, maybe you want to address what Samuel uh, asked? Sure. Well, thank you very much, first of all, Samuel, for your presence here today. And uh, um, your proposals for, for connection and development of uh, uh, of a collective reflection, I think, is uh, is very interesting and definitely uh, worth pursuing. Um, it would be great, of course, if uh, uh, some recyclers from Barcelona could um, could uh, voice uh, personally today. I'm not sure we have any any worker with us today. Uh, I would be happy to be to be wrong. So I. If, if there is any, please raise your hands if you feel comfortable with that. Um, in any case, uh, we we have contact with uh, with workers, um, mainly with uh, individual workers, because uh, as we were mentioning earlier, um, we we haven't managed to create connections or to identify um, representatives of uh, or, or uh, organizations that can. That, that we could uh, talk with uh, collectively, um, but we will definitely be happy to uh, to to explore the possibility of a connection with our contacts and to organize some moments of sharing together uh, in Barcelona or or in France. And uh, who knows? Maybe this will actually lead to the creation of uh, uh, collective actors that can support uh, or give voice uh, to to recyclers here in the city. I don't know if Julian or Federico want to add something to this. Well, no, no good. Uh, we, yeah. we are, oh, sorry, <clears throat> we are, we have, uh, or we want to develop a, a wider perspective, no? We understand that this is a, 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 a phenomenon that is not uh, connected with a, uh, or, or is not a, a, a strange phenomenon, it's transversal, no? It seems that it's a urban capitalist phenomenon. And of course, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, connected with, uh, with uh, migration, the flows of migration, and 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 also, uh, uh, we this is why it could be interesting, no, to 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 make this dialogues, uh, but also, um, well, years ago there had been organization ma mainly around uh, uh, problems connected with housing, no, I I saw some questions from. Uh, Carlos de Closa asking for the difference between between uh, informal settlements and and, ha and homeless. Uh, well, one of the questions that we haven't that, that we haven't researched in in a deeply manner is this connection between the activity and the house problem in Barcelona, no? Because there is a kind of uh, the, the, there is a kind of uh, a strange situation for for saving material. You need a space in a space in a very expensive city. No, and where we save materials? Well, this is a question that we have to to, to solve. Uh, that is connect, and this is why also some uh, shops where the where the recyclers sell materials are more connected with this with with this idea of informal settlements or um, or or squatting. Uh, well, and and all these organizations that happened years ago, right now, they are seems that they are not active. We we have to 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 check constantly because appear and disappear. The problem is that as the, those those, those phenomena are connected with housing, they are not actually claiming for for being or representing their their work. No, and this is one I think one of the 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 the, 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 the issues uh, uh, here. But we are open. We and we are in in our next uh, in, in our current project of our grassroots. We want to focus on on what are the organization uh, behind. What are the the social uh, the social relations uh, uh, attached to the these occupations? I guess that we have discussed a lot of topics. No. Yes. So <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, we have took took notes about a lot of. Uh, 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 ideas and, and, and suggestions. Ah, by the way, uh, 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 sorry, I don't know, I don't, Lija, Lija, you have to read the paper wrote by Michael Rendon and Giuseppe Splugas because they explain very well, not only the price of the, of the materials are important, also all the logistics, and they uh, research how 
um, uh, how when the uh, the of the cardboard um, uh, fell down, no, uh, and the recyclers stopped to collect it. The, the 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 city council of Granollers they have to spend thousands of of euros trying to solve this 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 uh, empty solution, no. And, can you and, can, can you put a a, a doy link on the on the chat, please? Because social yeah, aspects yeah. are kind of completely new for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I, share I, I, I will share it, and or, or also if Michael Rendon or or, or Joseph Esplugan can share it, could be nice. But it's a, it's a very good example of, of of how understand the phenomenon in a more complex way. From my side, this is so. I think he, we have uh, been here for about. Uh, two hours. I don't know if Susanna wanted to react. Sorry, I forgot to give you the chance to react to our reaction. So if there is any final comment you want to make, you're uh, most welcome. If there is anybody else in the room who has uh, uh, pressing questions or comment, then you are, of course, welcome to, to raise it now or be silent forever, because after two hours, I think we could be coming to a uh, to an end. Um, we have very much enjoyed being with you. Yes, Julia. Uh, yes, please, you go. Uh, sorry, uh, I cannot find the bottom to raise uh, my hand. <laughs> um, That's fine, I, I saw you in the camera. I'm part uh, um, of uh, an organization from Palermo in the south of Italy, who is trying to um, formalize the the activity of second-hand market in the city center. And I'm part of uh, the International Alliance of Waste Pickers as Samuel. We met uh, together uh, in Buenos Aires. Uh, hi, Samuel, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> uh, just a few words, because uh, the discussion uh, uh, in the Congress uh, uh, was about uh, uh, how to involve uh, the second-hand activities that in Italy, for example, are uh, apart from uh, the waste uh, management uh, uh, in the municipality uh, management, uh, but uh, um, at the same time are informal activities uh, and are made by people who are uh, out of uh, the formal uh, working system really poor people who uh, need to find uh, an income and they invented like in our case uh, 20 years ago uh, more than 20 years ago uh, the possibility to survive and to save money so it's important because we uh, are trying to focus out how to make pressure to the municipality and to be uh, a how to figure out together from bottom up uh, how to improve uh, the prevention uh, uh, policies, uh, especially in uh, a city where uh, the uh, selective collection uh, is really low, uh, and they want to they want to get <laughs> an incinerator. So even if uh, th those people. Uh, don't uh, uh, wait, uh, don't pick waste. It's important to close the, the circle and to include uh, the second hand and the reuse uh, uh, field uh, as a possibility to um, struggle against uh, uh, incineration uh, policies. Thank you. <laughs> No, you are most welcome, uh, Julia. You didn't invite us to Palermo, but of course, as we uh, would be happy to go to Paris and Marseille, we would also be very happy to go to, to Palermo. As you guess, as you can guess, Daniel and myself are Italians, and Julian is not Italian, but he's been learning Italian and doesn't mind uh, gelato and pizza. Um, so your your uh, <clears throat> your contribution is very welcome. Is what we said before. We are also learning this or we want to learn more, so to say, on this dimension of second-hand markets or flea markets in Barcelona and how we speakers are involved. I think with Blanca Cayenne, who is in the room, we will be exploring this uh, more. So learning about experiences everywhere is um, important. We have learned a lot uh, from the International Alliance of Way Speakers. With Daniele, we have a forthcoming book analyzing uh, 70 conflicts in involving way speakers in the Global South. 
uh, which is something we have been working on already in the last year. So we are interested not only about waste pickers in Barcelona, but also in other places in Europe and um, in the world. I think it has been super nice being here today. We don't uh, think that this is the end of anything. It is the beginning of something, or it is the continuation of social struggle for emancipation. Uh, just one more episode of it, of which we made a very humble uh, contribution. Of course, we would have loved to have we speakers here from Barcelona speaking with their own voice, but as you can imagine, it's not so simple given their uh, social situation, but we will be working on it. Um, you can follow up, we have your email, so we can tell you when we will have publications or this or any new results, which will be coming in the next month. We welcome all the comments and the questions that you gave us, starting from Susanna, but from, from all of you. And of course, do not hesitate to contact us if you want to follow up on these topics, which on which we are very much uh, motivated and we look forward uh, to keep working together. Uh, what else can I say? Thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks a lot.